Hello everyone! Rick and Ryan are at it again. It's time for the Slightly Warped Podcast. Hey, 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 welcome to another episode. It is the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, and I'm joined, as always, by Ryan Pulley, a.k.a. Big Show. Big show. Big show. What's up, Show? What's happening? How you doing? I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, a little tired today. Been busy. Seems like I've been running since I got up, and not in a good way. Just taking care of stuff, doing stuff, making sure stuff, just stuff. <laughs> yeah so um sucks being a grown-up doesn't it it, it kind of does still doing some remodeling around the house uh and the driver about uh 30 45 minutes ago just delivered the new front and back doors to the house and sweet about 140 pounds each i can guarantee that too because you know we had to bring them up yeah yeah, got my little workout in, but it's all good because uh, the wife's happy. And if she's happy, I'm happy. Right. Right. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> For those of you who are just listening and not getting the full visual experience, I'm not going to tell. Um, <laughs> how was your weekend, man? Um, it was pretty good. Uh, Father's Day was pretty good. Saturday blew chunks, but Sunday wasn't bad. Mm. I, uh, I had a pretty lazy weekend, but, uh, Saturday I decided, you know what? It's not going to rain for a couple days. I'm going to go ahead and wash the cars. So, you know, I washed both the SUVs. Now, it didn't rain yet. That's a plus. But, you know, I'm out there working. It's hot. I got my shirt off. So, not think anything of it. Light sunburn on my uh, shoulders. It's like, okay. Didn't see that one coming. And it's not a black people can't burn thing before. I've burned before. So, it's just fewer and farther in between. If you've got skin, you can burn. Yep. And I did. But it's all good. Because at least I think it might have something to do with washing the car. But I was also out there earlier that morning. I, I ran, what, uh, three or four miles on Saturday. But the sunburn didn't bother me. I ran another six miles on Sunday. Took yesterday off. After the show, as tired as I am, I am going to try to get in at least two miles, maybe three. We'll see how that goes. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I'll run with you in spirit. Well, your spirit can help me get in shape because um, I, I really, really need to get myself in better shape. So I'm forcing myself to start to eat better. And, you know, the, the activity part, that's not a problem. It ain't nothing for me to, you know, I, I, I can get into a routine. I'm a runner naturally. So that's, that's already routine. I can run three to five days a week, but uh, the exercise part of it, it's going to take me a couple weeks to get that down, but I don't feel that there'll be any roadblocks. It's the nutrition. that's going to, you know, when I'm eating that grass and everybody around me has got cupcakes and pies and stuff like that and i want to stab them with my knife and can't i just got to suck it down and do what i got to do um right now i'm at 195 pounds the target weight is to get somewhere between 180 and 185 from my height and weight, that, that's that's where i should be so if i can get you know that's just 10 pounds I mean, I say just, and I know there's a lot of people out there cussing me out now. Don't say just, because them last 10 pounds are the worst 10 pounds. 
but what happens when your last 10 pounds are your first 10 pounds? Am I going to have it easy or is it going to suck? Yes. <laughs> there you have it, folks. The definitive answer from Big Show. All right, Show. A um, couple things I want to discuss in the wild, warped world of the news. The first one, this one says, a study finds a, dis a disturbing amount of fecal contamination at U.S. beaches. So I'm saying to myself, oh, Ricky, what the hell is this that I'm reading? And it says, as the summer season gets underway, a new report finds that many coastal U.S. waterways, including popular beaches for swimming, are contaminated with unsafe levels of fecal bacteria. After sampling water sites around the country, the Surfrider Foundation and Ocean Protection Advocacy Program found unsafe levels of fecal contamination at 19% of the 9,095 water samples. Of the 496 sites sampled, 301 of them, which is 61%, had at least one sample from last year that tested above the recreational water health standard. First, I want to know who's shitting in the water. That's what I want to know. It doesn't say human fecal. It just says fecal. So you've got all those seabirds and geese and all that other crap. It, it ain't it ain't human feces. I don't know, because you keep reading. It says during storms, U.S. beaches are often inundated with runoff from streets and sewers, bringing bacteria into the ocean or inland waterways, such as rivers and lakes. Uh, pavement doesn't absorb uh, water the way forests, wetlands, and other natural areas do. Many older cities have a combined sewer system collecting rainwater runoff, sewage, industrial wastewater into one pipe. And in heavy rains, which are increasingly common during climate change, the uh, sewer treatment plants can become overloaded, leading them to discharge untreated sewage directly into the water. Now, I'm not saying that there isn't any human feces, but I'm not <laughs> saying that that's the only the only one that they're finding. I mean, add that with the actual animal population. I mean. Now, here's my thing. It's not surprising. I don't, I don't do public pools. And as far as I'm concerned, the beach is just one big public pool. So um, I've gone to the beach, but I haven't swam in the beach. So why don't you go to public pools? Because too many snot-nosed little kids piss in the pool all the time. Right, but that's what the chemicals in the pool are for. That's yeah. not, that's going to kill all that stuff. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, no, I'm I'm good. I like I like my. Pool. I just I just swim in the deep end where the little kids ain't. So I ain't swimming <laughs> through yellow clouds. Well, there you go. Um, the other reason why I don't go to the ocean and swim, uh, there's that uh, shark thing. <laughs> I, I can't outrun yeah. Jaws. <laughs> True that. Can't out swim swim a shark. Nope. Um. Yeah, that's probably why. I, I mean, when we were in Hawaii a couple of years ago, I mean, I, I got out about waist level in the ocean. Now, I didn't say I wouldn't get in the water when I was in Florida. But I'm not, I'm not going to go out there and swim and where I can be taken under. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Now, I will say this. You were in Hawaii? Yeah, I'd yes. be out in the water too. I mean, you that's part of the Hawaiian experience. You go to you go to a place that's known for beaches, such as Hawaii, California, Florida, you visit the beaches in addition to all oh, the yeah. other stuff out there. So I get that. I get that. Yeah, it was it was the first time I've ever seen the ocean, so it was it was pretty cool. The first time, huh? So you know ne you never been on a cruise? Never. Man, I, I wanna I wanna tell you right now if you and the missus get a chance to go on a cruise go on the cruise man cruises are wonderful uh, i will say this there's a lot of news reports now compared to way back in the day when i went on a cruise stating that uh, cruises are unsafe this unsafe that i liken it to uh flight 
Um, yeah, people will tell you that planes aren't safe, and I get that. Uh, but uh, how many of them go up every day, and then how many crashes do you hear about? So, you so what's unsafe me- about an airplane? Let's 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 address that first. What's unsafe about an airplane? Well, they're no different than a car. I mean, there's going to be a crash, but car crashes right. are way more frequent. Because I will tell you, and this is from a person that doesn't fly. I don't fly. I, I, that, I have a fear of, of flying. The only thing that I think that's that's fearful when you say if it's your time to go, it's your time to go. But what if it's the pilot's time to go? I mean, that means that's when take it us becomes with a problem. <laughs> right. That's the only time I can see where it'd be unsafe. Other than that, flying, I don't find it unsafe. No more than dr- driving a car. I mean, accidents are going to happen. Yeah, I mean, automobile uh, accidents are more prevalent because there's more automobiles than yeah. there are planes. But so the percentages of it happening are up. But I don't know. Oh, yeah. I guess it depends on on a cruise where you're going if it's safe or unsafe. Now, my cruise was with my first wife, and we went to uh, well, we we flew down to Florida, and from there, we shipped out and went to uh, Costa Maya and Cozumel, Mexico. And we, you know, we were in those nice warm waters. Beautiful place, by the way. Uh, so that that was my cruise, you know. That's on my bucket list. Yeah. And, and the other reason why I say do the cruise. Oh, God, they feed you and feed you. Now, this is from a person who's trying to lose a few extra pounds right now, but. If I was going on a cruise, I would just have to hit the reset button because I'm going to eat. I mean, you you paid for the cruise. They give you anything you want. I think the only thing you got to pay for on the boat is um, alcohol. Everything else is taken care of. You want to go see a movie? It's taken care of. By the way, they have theaters. At least the one we went on had uh, two movie theaters, a small golf course, and... Um, I'm missing something. There's a basketball court in the gym area, but and it's a full court, by the way, because this was a big ship. But I'm I'm forgetting something. What did, what what else did they have? Um, besides all the dining halls. Oh well, it'll come back to me. Um, but I mean the the thing's big. It's like a city floating on the water. Now, do the dining halls all basically serve the same food? No. Um. There's one that's really big, at least on the boat we were on, and it was very formal. Formal type food, formal attire. You know, we 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 had the captain's dinner in that dining hall. One of them was more like a burger joint. And uh, I don't think I ate at the third one, so I can't really speak to what, what all it entailed. I had breakfast there, but uh, that was just a really in out. I'm really grabbing this and taking it back to the cabin. Which we didn't spend too much time in the cabin because they're tiny. Yeah, if, I, if if we do one, I would like to have one that has the balcony, you know, type of thing on the, so you can. Oh, you can walk set out and watch the ocean yeah. and all that. You can walk up to the. No, I mean like in your room. Oh, oh, yeah. That's you, what I'm you, talking You're about. doing the big time. You paying double the price then for for your well, uh, if, room. If I was gonna if I was gonna do it, I was gonna do it right. You know, I don't know. I don't blame you. Uh, ours was paid for, so you know. It was there you good. go. Yeah. Her, was her that folks, a honeymoon thing? Her folks, yeah. Her folks sent us that way. So we were like, we're not going to say no. Heck no. No. Now, um, the marriage didn't last, but the memories will always be there. There you go. <laughs> All right, bro. Next subject. Um, I want to know what the hell is wrong with us. And by us, I mean. You and me or. Everybody, everybody, there's not enough the sound of time in this show just to tell you what's wrong with us. But uh, this one here is 30 terrible things that were accepted in the 80s, but not today. Keep in mind, the 80s were 23 years ago, or if you're like me, you can say it was just 23 years ago. Um, and it says here the 80s nostalgia grows stronger and stronger. Well, by technically, day. 1980 would be 33 years ago, wouldn't it? I'm going all the way to 89, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to... 
Yeah, I'm but that's not the hold 80s. On to it. I'm that's trying to hold on to the 80s. It. Hey, hey, I'm trying to hold you on gotta, to the 80s. That was a fabulous you have to go decade. Back. You have to go back 33 years. All right. so we can we'll, we'll, say, we'll say 23 to 33 years ago. There you go. Um, It says here, not many people cared. Not many cared for people with allergies. I, I, I never knew that. Um, I don't remember that being a big thing in the 80s. Oh, he's got allergies. I don't want to be around him. I, I don't remember that. You remember that? I could, I can, I can visualize it kind of, you know, a little bit because that's when AIDS was prevalent. So if you were mm. sneezing or things like that, you know, might be people kind of like now with COVID, people look at you sideways. Uh, unless you're one of them people that now believe that COVID doesn't exist. It yeah, was a right. hoax. Spanking okay. kids. I think that's more prevalent. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that because in today's society, if you just look at your kids sideways, people are ready to call DC. Somebody's on telling on you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now you're supposed to talk to your kids at their level and talk to them like they're your buddy. Yeah, screw that. Mm -hmm. What did we talked about last week, spread a rod, spoil the child? Mm, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and and I know there's probably some listeners out there that believe that, uh, no, you shouldn't spank your kid. Find me a kid that's grown up and was never spanked. And you tell me exactly how they handle themselves. Nine times out of ten, you're going to get one that uh, we'll just say a little unhinged. Yeah, there's some adults out there that need to be spanked. That's another story for another time. Um... I don't remember this chicken pox parties really in yes, the 70s I and do. 80s parents wanted to expose okay that's what it is okay so they yes. were just putting all the kids together to give them chicken pox at the same time and so get they would all get, i actually was involved in one of those when i was a kid really in the 70s i mean i mean 78 i got chicken pox but i wasn't in any party you know i just yep they put us and all our cousins all together at once so we could get it all out the i way. mean Unless mama was on the down low, hey, let's go over to your friend's house, you know, and not say anything to me, but I just thought I just contracted it. Um, oh yeah. PG thirteen movies did not exist until the mid eighties. I sometimes forget that. I mean, it seems like it's been the norm. Um children went into the cockpits of planes. Yeah, I remember being invited to a cockpit of a plane. We were on a school field trip, and we uh, we went to one of the uh, airstrips, and they let us in the cockpit. That was no biggie. Um, can't do that now. You try to get into the cockpit of a plane now, uh, the the air marshal he <laughs> gonna be on you. <laughs> he don't care yeah, how old no, you are. There's no way to get in once it's once they're in there and locked in. There's no way to get in. Here's another one um, similar to what we were talking about in a previous show. Homophobia was at an all-time high. Yes. Due to AIDS. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, male co-workers had more freedom. That is true because in the Me Too movement, you do not now. If you just say hi to some women, they're ready to cry. So Def Define freedom. Like Well, it says here, object, object effect. Yeah objectification of women was more visible in the 80s grouping was not uncommon and complaining about your co-workers playboy obsession meant that a woman was jealous or worse yeah i i can see that uh the safety standards in cars was different but then again if you think <laughs> about it cars were safer because they were more metal than tin foil i mean think about it if you crashed your daddy's cadillac Compared to your daddy's Toyota, which one do you think you're going to survive in? Well, Toyota, probably both because they're pretty safe vehicles. But that's true. I, 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 I do understand what you're saying. I should have said but, uh, what? I mean, but we used to ride the back of the pickup trucks and, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, kids rode bikes without helmets. We, we, we did all kind of, we were stuntmen before stuntmen were popular. I'm looking at you, fall guy. Um yeah true statement today's kids excuse me guys yeah i hope Are nobody's offended if you are offended by what i'm about to say 
let me know. Uh, the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. Today's kids are pussies, and I'm just gonna put it out there. Um, what is this here? Egocentricity and materialism were on the rise. Oh, yeah, especially in the 80s. You think so? Eh, oh, maybe oh, I just didn't yeah. notice. Materialism? Madonna's material girl? Yeah, I mean, come you, on. You're now. right. You're right. You're right. I mean, she- that that was I had I had, I had to bring in that flashback. Back then. You're yeah, right. Vanity back then. Damn, now you made me have a flashback. What was that movie before he got really popular? Um the guy that played Batman, Christian Bale. It took place in the eighties. It was actually made in the nineties, but it was made to take place in the eighties. He was a psychopath who was very materialistic and he was actually a serial killer. Wasn't it called uh Oh, what? Ah, I had a relative in my. Yeah, kid. you oh. know what I'm talking about, though. Yes. Damn. That's going to haunt wasn't me it, to the end of the show. Wasn't it called like Psychopath or some shit like that? That's it. American Psycho. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, mean, I knew you had the word. It was already. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, What else happened in the 80s? Children played without adult supervision. That's true. I mean,. When we were kids, we go three or four blocks over, catch some more friends, do whatever, come back when it's dark, whatever. It don't you work better like not that come now. back before dark. Yeah, yeah. If them street lights were on and you wasn't home, mm, 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 mm. but you better not come home before dark. <laughs> Your ass is out there until the lights come yeah. on. That's the rule. Now we we had a few exceptions. You know, we had a few neighbors that were like one or two houses away. If we were playing basketball, as long as she could see us, mama was okay with that. And we we loved yep. playing basketball until it was pitch black. We'd be like, hey, dude, open your garage door and turn on the light. Turn on the car light, something. We we still got a game going. Uh-huh. We were obsessive little fuckers. Hitchhiking was a way of transportation. I believe it. You hitchhike now, you ain't coming home. Just saying. Too many uh, people are crazy. I, yeah, but I think more people were crazy then, which is why it's not relevant now. Uh, I mean, because if you go, especially if you throw the 70s into it, that's when, you know, Ted Bundy and all that was yeah. rolling. And that's how they picked people up. You know, that's that's yeah, why that, that it's not prevalent crazy. now is because of, I mean, and then like co-ed killer. I mean, just Ed Kemper. If you don't know about him, look him up. I mean, that's what he he actually practiced how to kill young women by picking up over 300 hitchhikers, but not killing them just to see what what make what makes a female nervous, what sets them at ease, that type of stuff. Wow. So he was using them as guinea pigs. Yes. In his little game. Now, he only killed like five or six people. And I say only, but. And two of them were his mom and her friend. But oh uh, damn! I mean, you know, he started big then, didn't he? Well, that was the ending of him. Oh, okay. I mean, that's what the last two before he turned himself in. But um, yeah, bro was like, I want to know what it's like to kill. He somebody. had a lot of Not practice. A total stranger. Yeah, he had a lot of practice uh, on picking people up. Not necessarily killing them. Yeah, I guess that's the one thing you don't need practice on because uh, keep doing it until it gets done. I mean, I guess it depends what your motif of, you know, because, you know, it's more difficult than what they show on TV. Not that oh, yeah. I know for sure. I'm just telling you stuff that I've read, you know. Oh, yeah. How, how the how the guy can just, like, come from behind you and snap your neck doesn't quite work yeah. like that. No. Circuses had actual animals. Now, I've not been to a circus lately, but I've heard a lot of people say that the uh, there was less and less to do or see at a circus who've gone recently. So I guess I can see that they don't bring as many animals. It's more spectacle and acts and stuff like that. And more of a show than a circus. Yeah. It's probably been a decade since I've been to a circus and there were less animals than I remember. There's still quite a few, but I haven't been to one in the last 10 years. Spousal abuse was not recognized. I can see that because more and more we are 
we're in a society that, uh, you know, it's built now to protect the woman for better or for worse. I will say this. You hear about it in sports a lot when someone's abusing a woman. Uh, don't go off with on these one of these tangents like some people are. All those athletes think they can get away with. It's not just the athletes. They're a public figure, so you hear more about it. It's not just the actors. They're a public figure, so you hear more about it. Um, because they are prominent is why you know more about them doing it. But you, you, your next door neighbor might be an abuser. I think to the, um, you know, when you say it's more prevalent now or in the known now is just because of everybody has a camera, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, Back in the day, it was easier to hide that type of behavior. That's true. Um, echo friendly was not a word, and that may be why we've got too much poop in the water. Eco friendly, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think it's like echo. <laughs> hello, 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 hello. <laughs> you know, data, data, potato, potato, Soma tomato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> uh, yeah. Back in the 80s, kids, marijuana was illegal. Now everybody Back in doing the 90s, it, it was illegal. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it just recently became legal in the last five, ten years. Um, airport security was a joke back in the 80s. Well, I believe that. Yes. That was before 9-11. Yes. So, yeah, that Secu changed everything. I'd say security in general was a joke. That, yeah. Yeah, it was. Because things had to change. Um, dress code was crucial. Uh, I can see that. It says here today's coworkers can wear pretty much what they want. I do see that because the lines are a little bit more blurred between business and casual. Yes. When you were in an office setting, you wore a tie, you know, college shirt and a tie, except for casual Friday, we wore a college shirt, like a golf shirt. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. Things are different now much different now this one's funny moms went against heavy metal well yeah i, I can see how that changed yeah. because today's moms are the ones that listened to heavy metal <laughs> true that good yep <laughs> this is true um but that was also in the hype of satanic panic too so everybody thought that heavy metal was satan worshiping oh don't play that backwards it's gonna be uh you know yeah i can see that i can see that but they, they, hey, for better or for worse, the eighties was still the decade, man. I love the eighties. It was just, I just, I love it because I'm really big into entertainment, and things were different in the eighties. As far, I'm not talking about music or movies or you know any any entertainment in general, because more of it was creative. We live in a world now full of remakes. Yeah, I would say. If you are a fan of today's entertainment, um, whether it be cell phones, computers, movies, music, uh, TV shows, it was all born in the 80s. All mm -hmm. of it was born in the 80s. While you're on that tangent there, um, people that were that have gotten into, oh, I'm going to get that Motorola Razor, bro. That was a thing back in the 80s. We had that when phones were, you know, getting smaller and folding and all that. It's just coming back now. That wasn't the 80s. That was 90s. Was it the 90s? 80s cell phones were the briefcase, the big brick with the antenna that you used to see on Miami uh, Vice and all that. Yeah, I guess. The 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 smaller. So cell you got to realize, like, I never had the bag phone, but I did have a phone back neither. in the late eighties where it was in my car. But that was part of the purchase plan. So we had pagers, bro. You went there. I had a pager. I loved that thing. We had pagers versus cell phones. Hey, by the way, all you kids out there, our pagers were smaller than your cell phones. Oh yeah, uh, I don't know if that's a competition or not, but. Oh yeah, and you you were quick to show your stuff too, boy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, you know, we didn't have to have our pad our pants sagging. We just had our uh, pager sticking out of the pocket. Uh, yep. But I will say this: 
even though, you know, it was the 90s. I have noticed, though, that people kept trying to get a smaller and smaller cell phone, and then it shifted back to bigger phones. The Samsung I'd say because Galaxy. entertainment wise, you want. Yeah. You want that, especially with everything streaming now, you want that screen so you have a television in your hand. Basically. Yeah, the iPhone 23, it's six feet long, you know, or whatever. Um, yeah. Guys, if you're into bigger cell phones, just get a tablet. Just get a tablet. I've got an iPad if I want to, like, yeah. look at something. Kind of hard, yeah. It's kind of hard to put that up to your ear and have a conversation, but hey, so be it. If you want to, go ahead. I'll put it on speakerphone. <laughs> Let everybody know I'm talking on my big screen iPad. Um, Hello? Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, back in the 80s, we had boom boxes on our ears, on our oh, shoulders, actually. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes, we did. Boom box parties. Mm -hmm. and, and we let everybody know what we were listening to. And everybody wanted to listen to it. That is true. That is so take true. Take your take your little piece of linoleum, throw it on the corner. Everybody break dancing. Yeah, break dancing was a real thing, kids. I don't I don't know what they're doing now. Listen to me talking like an old man. I don't know what the kids are doing now. Back in the day, <laughs> and me my cane hurt my leg from all them years of break dancing. Right. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick from the financial side, because, you know, this is good stuff here. Dave Ramsey says you should have this amount as an emergency fund. I remember if it was two or three shows back. We were talking about, you know, how much would be a good amount for an emergency fund. And here's what he said. Um, uh, what you should do primarily is have about uh, three to six months worth of living expenses saved. Um, but he said, start small, start with a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars is not a lot, but it's a start. Don't get a thousand dollars thinking, okay, I'm good. Keep building on it until you get three to six months worth of money for living expenses saved up. And then you can be comfortable in case of an emergency. And it says here, it's important to note that this is meant to serve as bare bones emergency fund and, uh, not a real way uh, just for something until you get out of debt so to speak um what what he went on to say was let me pull it up here when you're broke and just getting started everything is an emergency because you're broke but the more you put back money the less you're driving junk cars and you become you begin to get more wiggle room in your budget uh, you're more likely to nip many issues in the bud that could get more co more costly if left unchecked. Later, when you've got more money, the air conditioner is getting service regularly on the house. He said as soon as uh, there's one little thing on the roof, you can fix it before it creates a leak or a bigger mess. So you start with a thousand, be cautious, build on it. And he is right. Because when you got money, it don't seem like you have that many emergencies because you take care of stuff. So you, you do have to build. I, I, I like where he went with that. I agree with all that. Uh, the other thing is what I tell my kids, too, is when you get your paycheck, you need to pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. And you pay yourself 10%, whatever it is, and that goes into savings. And the rest of it is towards survival, bills, you know, that type of thing. Now, one thing that I've um, told both of my sons, when it comes to making that purchase that you want, whatever the purchase is, at the very least, make sure that you have double that amount. I don't want my kids to think, oh, I want this $20 item. I've only got $20 in my pocket and then spend it all. You got $40, you spend 20, you still got 20. You got $100, you spend 50, you still got 50. Make sure that you at least have left the same amount that you spend out. That way, one, you don't get that buyer's remote, excuse me, that buyer's remorse when you broke as a joke. And two, you're comfortable knowing that even though you made whatever that purchase is, you still got something in case something else uh, comes up. I like that. 
Yeah, it, it it's something I try to live by, and it 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 really helped me because I'd say in small doses, yes. But if I'm out to buy a car, I'm not going to have double. Of that, well, yeah, you know? uh, your big depends. purchases now. I no. guess it depends. I'm talking about fun is. money. I'm talking about fun money. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I need fifteen thousand for a car. I need thirty thousand. Then I'll, I'll never get that car. Then no, nah, no, you'll get the car. But once you get thirty, you'll try to get a sixty thousand dollar car. Put thirty dollars. <laughs> you know, that's oh, I got more money. I don't want this little fifteen thousand dollar car no more. You know, that's normally how the younger generation works. Yeah, and then I try to. I try to also. That helps is obviously you don't want to be in in, in credit debt. Mm -hmm. but you want to have an established credit line. Yes, sir. So, you know, get you a little small credit card. I tell my kids, you get it and only put fuel on it and make sure you pay it off every single month. That interest that you're not paying, that it brings your points up and everything, and you'll be able to have a, an established credit line that when you want to purchase a house or purchase, you know, something big, you won't have an issue with it. Hey, that goes hand in hand with what I was telling the boys, because if they, oh, I want a $20 item, pay $20 with that credit card, then take that 20 in cash that you have, pay it off. All yep. of a sudden you're good again. You still got that other half in cash yep. in your pocket, but you've also made your credit look a little bit better. Yes. And when I was younger, I didn't think credit was important, but I'm telling you, I didn't either. I didn't either. And I, I wish I would have. I wish Man. I knew now what I knew or knew then what I right? know now. Trust me. Man. See, we, we, we are capable of giving out some good information every now and then. Uh, fun stuff, some good stuff, some informative stuff. That's what we're all about. Before I get out of here, let y'all know one last time, if there's anything you want us to talk about, make sure that you uh, leave us a message. If you're on YouTube in the comments, uh, if not, you can also email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. Big show. You want to take us on out of here? Got anything for yes, us? Yes, sir. Just be sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, tomorrow's not promised. Be sure to tell loved ones you love them. Amen. You guys take care.